Oh, hi there, Cousin Allie, or favorite Cousin Allie and, and Scott. Uh, it was great talking to you. And as you requested, we're going to talk today about how to uh, cut an onion and then dice it for the recipes of your choice. Wait, wait, Milo, we're supposed to be doing coffee, not onions. Oh, oops. Well, luckily we can switch gears. So I'll get rid of the onion, and now we can talk about coffee. So, uh, Barbara, if you could show them our, our setup here. What we're going to do is start with our equipment list. And our equipment list consists primarily of this variable temperature kettle. This is a Brewista variable temp one liter kettle. And it allows us to uh, create, the, uh, set it for the temperature we want. Uh, and then there's a button on it that allows you to keep that at that temperature for an hour. So if you want to set it and then you do some things to coffee, temperature water will be ready. We use a bird grinder. This is a Capresso. I think it's pronounced Capresso. A bird grinder. You want to use a bird grinder for your coffee. The bird grinders make a fairly uniform uh, particle size. If you use a blade grinder, what you're doing is slapping these beans with this blade that just goes whirring and it makes very uneven uh, particle size. Particle size is important for consistency in making coffee and uh, for the right, getting the right flavors. When you have the blade grinder stuff, you get a lot of bitter flavors compared to this. Um, we use a Chemex, as you saw earlier, and that you're familiar with. And then we use a scale here. This is a Hario scale, model VST2000. And we use it so that we can make the same cup of coffee every day. The last thing you need, or the last couple things you need is, you need uh, uh, the white filters. And we buy white filters uh, so that we buy white filters because uh, they're stiffer than the brown filters by the same company of Chemex. Uh, I've spoken to the people who uh, we buy them from uh, online, and they say they're essentially the same filter. The brown ones sell more because people think they're natural, they aren't, and they also are not as stiff. So these are stiff when you want to remove the filter from the Chemex, these are easier to use. So we place the Chemex here. So the process we're going to go through is, first we grind the beans, which I've already done. We have the water heated to the right temperature. Next, <clears throat> on the right temperature, I think, is anywhere below 205. If it's over 205, uh, you, you risk over extracting the beans and getting bitter flavors. So try not to do that. Uh, if you want it hot, you know, 202 is probably fine. You know, you place the filter in, you take your hot water, and you rinse the, uh, the filter, and then the, you see there's water coming in there. That should hopefully, we get rid of it, you, to you toss the, uh, the water out, put the filter back on. I made a mess over here, but that's okay. Um, and then you t zero out the, uh, the scale. So it says zero, you take the ground coffee that I already did earlier, you pour it in here, and, it, and for us it's 40, we use 42 grams, and then using this handy guide that I printed out, I made myself, I look over for 42 and it says we need 714 grams of water. And this is a ratio of about 16 and a half or 17 to one, which is typical. If you go get a pour over, this is generally the ratio of water to coffee bean that you'll see. So I zero it out, I measured out, there's 42 grams in there, and then I slowly add water, first just a little bit to wet all the coffee grounds. And so I'm not um, pouring the rest of the coffee water in, I'm letting this first get wet for about 15 to 30 seconds. Once all the coffee's wet, then it'll, it's easier to get a better, excuse me, mix so I'll go ahead and I'll do this, pouring this in. And uh, I'm doing it a little bit faster than I usually do. Usually I do it and I kind of rinse the grain, the, the grounds as they, as they come across. And one of the reasons this isn't 
flowing properly is because I'm using cold water for this demonstration rather than heat the water up. So it's not going to drip. When that's all done, I simply take this, I lift this up, I lift that up, toss it in the trash or the recompost bin, and then I pour our coffee out, which is probably at that point about 195 degrees temperature. And then you put whatever you want. Now, if you really want to go overboard, I got this gift. This is an ember coffee mug. They're 80 bucks. My brother gave it to me. And what this does is I can set, set it through a Bluetooth app uh, communication on my phone, and I can set it so that when the temperature drops to, we'll say, 140, then it'll automatically kick in as a heating element that is recharged overnight, and that will heat the coffee back up to a higher temperature so that if I'm lollygagging while I drink, it'll go ahead and uh, heat my coffee up. So lastly, I wanted to say, uh, the other coffee, real briefly, if you use a, uh, a French roast, use a more coarser grain so that it doesn't, the grains don't come through the uh, metal filter. And then the other thing we use is an AeroPress on occasion, which makes a great cup of coffee. All of them work. I think the most important thing to remember is consistency so that if you change a variable, you know what you're doing rather than changing a bunch of things. And to remember there's no right or wrong way to make coffee. Uh, I think most people uh, find what their comfort zone and uh, will make coffee that's the easiest way for them to make. So they'll do it again. Otherwise people tend not to follow through. So that's it. If you have any questions, uh, please give us a call and we'll be glad to, uh, to speak about this. Thank you.